So, AI is here to ruin our imaginations. Are you folks in agreement with me? All I hear is a bunch of mumbles out there. <laughs> the challenge with AI that we have to worry about in our current digital world is that there's a lot of fear concerned with AI. Talking with people backstage and throughout my journeys as a national speaker, people are always afraid of AI and what it's going to do. I think too many people have been watching too many Terminator movies and have determined that the machines are going to rise up and take advantage of us. And the challenge with that, people believe this so much that they think that our hearts, minds, and souls are in danger of being ruined by AI. And it's understandable because in the world of AI and in technology, where has imagination gone? Where has ima imagination gone in a world filled with screens? Probably as I'm up here speaking right now, somebody in the audience is looking at their smartphone and trying to determine what thing is more popular and what is more entertaining than seeing a tech expert on stage. But imagination has been taken away a little bit because screens occupy too much of our time. But the good thing about technology is, is that technology needs to be seen as any device that can drive us forward and help us reach our fullest human potential. That's the whole goal of technology is to make sure that we're not like the Flintstones and riding or using our feet to get from point A to point B and having dinosaurs live in our homes. The idea is to help us pull away from technology and that we have more time to spend with our friends and family. We weren't designed to be in front of our tech devices 24 hours a day. Admit it. Your smartphone is your alarm clock. Your smartphone is your constant companion. And your smartphone is the first thing that you use when you wake out of bed. And hopefully, you are not taking that smartphone to the toilet with you in the morning <laughs> when you get up. Now, as far as our imaginations in AI, digital burnout is a real thing. We all live our stressed lives because we want to excel in life. And the thing that is helping us excel is technology and generative AI. It, just think about it. You can go to AI and you can get anything that you want. Want to write a paper for school? And I hope students in the audience know you better not write a paper using AI because you're going to get kicked out. But that temptation is there because we are so frustrated and so overwhelmed that we're burned out. So it is a easy excuse to use AI to help create the things that we want as opposed to using our own organic minds to come up with new content. And there are several examples of that. How many of you have heard the story of the two New York attorneys that decided to write a legal brief using ChatGPT. The challenge with that is, is that they trust it, but they didn't verify because ChatGPT has the ability sometimes to hallucinate. So maybe, and sometimes AI will go to the local dispensary and get into some stuff that it probably shouldn't do. <laughs> and then it comes back and says, hey, I got this for you. So those two attorneys did not trust, they trusted, but they didn't verify. Did you know ChatGPT brought up legal cases that didn't even exist? Isn't that horrible? But the challenge is, is that I'm sure these attorneys were so overwhelmed that they said, hey, here's a tool that can do my job for me so I can have it work and I can just show up and go to court. Other examples are this. So there was a comic book created a few years ago called Zarya of the Dawn. Now the comic book was created by Chris Carstanova, and the text was her own organic thinking as far as creating the text of the comic book. But Midjourney was the actual tool used to create the images in said comic. Now, when Chris tried to take the comic book to get copyrighted, US Copyright said, wait a minute, you did what? You used Midjourney to create your images. And I'm sorry you cannot copyright that material because any 
material currently, as far as current U.S. copyright law, cannot be copyrighted if you used AI in order to create that. So I ask you again, do we think that AI is killing our imaginations? Now, I know I'm no artist, and if I made a comic book, it would be full of stick figures. But I know also that if I created said comic, I would want to take the time to use my organic thought to increase and improve my artistic skills. Speaking of art, let's talk about the Colorado State Fair. Now, Jason Allen decided to submit work to the Colorado State Fair and won first place. How awesome is that? To go to an art uh, contest and win first place. Only challenge is the people cannot keep their mouth shut. So Jason probably would have won first place, but he couldn't keep his mouth shut because he bragged and said, you know what? I used Midjourney to create this art piece. So do you think Jason has a first place ribbon anymore? Well, maybe he does, but again, it shows the instances that we run into in our digital world where we want to create something, but also we're victims of falling to shortcutting things that we encounter our lives. I mean, it used to be in the good old days. When I was growing up, you went to the Rand McNally Encyclopedia, a world book encyclopedia, and you could plagiarize your heart's content because you didn't want to write that paper. <laughs> now you can't do that because everything's on the internet. So it shows how stressed out we are. But again, it's a reminder, the question that we need to ask ourselves, is AI stealing our imagination? Now, musicians are even guilty of this. There is a group called Alta that created a song called The Savages, who features Jay-Z. Now, Jay-Z's nowhere on this recording because the group, in order to get some attention, decided they wouldn't ask Jay-Z to be a part of the song. They just cloned Jay-Z's voice. Now, I don't think the group got in trouble for this because they did not try to copyright the song or even take royalties from releasing it on YouTube. But still, it shows that we want to make things happen and maybe we aren't doing everything we should to make it happen. How hard would it have been to call Jay-Z to ask him to be a part of this record? In my opinion, with me not being such a big Jay-Z fan, maybe they should have just cloned the voice of Tupac and it would have turned out a lot better. Because Tupac, in my opinion, is a better rapper than Jay-Z. Sorry if Jay-Z sees this TED Talk, but hey, dude, I'm sorry. You ain't got the rap skills like Tupac does, right? So anyway, moving forward in our digital world, we have to find ways in order to work alongside of AI to help take our imaginations to the next level. We, don't, we want to utilize AI because AI has a lot of potential as far as things that it can do. But when working with AI, I have to remind all of you that AI is still experimental. Hopefully you read the fine print whenever you go to ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot or even Google Gemini or Meta AI. All generative AI is experimental. So if you are going to team up with AI, you need to make sure that you trust and you verify, but also remember to use AI as only a foundation of creating what you want to create not using AI to take the place of your own organic thought to create whatever project is that you're working on. Now, balance is always the key in everything that we do in life. And when it comes to tech devices, we have to remind ourselves as humans that we don't want to live in a world of the Jetsons where we've got Rosie doing everything for us or we've got specific robots that are performing our tasks. We have to remember to keep a good balance between how we're using generative AI and how we're keeping our organic thought. Because in the end, we have to remember that it's us as humans that came up with the technology for AI. And that technology goes as far back as Alan Turing, who created the beginnings of AI back during World War II. Again, it was a tool, and it always should be a tool so remember to keep a good balance when you're using AI in your lives. Now there's a quote from the movie Man of Steel 
which deals with Superman, just in case you didn't know who the Man of Steel was, that says, what if a child dreamed of becoming something other than what society intended? And that is the whole goal of AI and technology. AI is the great equator, meaning that if you are, come from underprivileged background, you can definitely use technology and AI to stay up with everyone. And we need to remember that we need to keep our own organic selves and our own organic thoughts, rather than just becoming a slave to the machines, so to speak, and allowing the machines to take over. I want to leave you with this. The power of imagination and our power of imagination makes us infinite. So it's like the old adage, if you build it, if you dream it, they will come. When it comes to AI, it doesn't matter if your own organic thought is combined with AI. If you imagine something, an idea, no matter how small, it has the ability to become infinite and everlasting. And that's all we are, is a group of ideas and a collection of ideas that have come together to form the human race. Now that quote of the power of imagination makes you infinite was from John Muir, who actually is the father of the national park system. So nature encouraged his imagination and you can look to nature, meaning organic thought, and you can also look to the power of AI and technology to help further fuel your dreams. So the answer to the question of, is AI going to kill our imaginations? I think the answer to that is only if you let it. If you allow AI to do your day-to-day -day task, then it will stifle your organic thought. But if you take the time to utilize AI as only a tool and not an ends to a mean to quickly accomplish what you want, then you will not succumb to allowing AI take over our imaginations. Thank you, and thank you for listening to my TED Talk.